what is the features of this module what are the requirements of this module <clears throat> so whenever i want to push data from the microcontroller to the external system if i provide multiple lines to push one data let's say for example my data is comes of 8 bit characters ascii codes <clears throat> so i want to send some string every character the string is 8 bits so if i want to push the data using eight digital lines yes i can do it using a gpo pins because already those pins are available so eight gpo pins i can use it i can write one character at a time using a gpo pins but that takes more number of hardware lines so naturally what will happen the cable connection between the microcontroller and the external systems like pc will be uh, more number of lines hardware is more complex even if one line is giving a problem that means the data will not be communicated properly to make the communication between the microcontroller and the host systems more simple not much of hardware complexity people use always serial communication so that mean that so the communication between the microcontroller and other intelligent systems should always be recommended is only serial communication so whenever you think about serial communication there are two methods are available either i can go for a synchronous serial communication or i can go for a asynchronous communication generally whenever we want to connect microcontroller to, to a computer where <coughs> distance is around 3 to 4 meters distance is little longer we always go for a asynchronous serial communication whenever you want to communicate the data or have an understanding between the microcontroller and other ics so that mean that i have a one sensor ic or an ic uh, which is another microcontroller itself in such cases the communication can be so using synchronous communication that mean that when we are building a board a new hardware where multiple intelligent systems are there so one intelligent system is represented by another ic and another ic can be our microcontroller itself the communication can be synchronous serial communication because both exist at very closer proximity so i can use a different protocols so that mean that microcontroller support both asynchronous communication for a longer distance communication like external cable so you are using a cable here so here is what a cable is used here as yes or no so whereas here i am not using a cable in the board itself i am making the connection between these two systems whenever cable is used the the question of noise interference and it works at a external uh, environment so it can be extended up to 10 meters 15 meters like that so in industries so those are the scenarios we generally use asynchronous serial communication when the systems are very close you establish the connection between these two systems using uh, the lines embedded on the pcb itself we can go for a synchronous serial communication so what are the protocols generally available to support synchronous communication and asynchronous communication implemented in the microcontrollers am i audible yes sir yeah so uart uart is a protocol uart is a protocol generally used for asynchronous communication that is why the module which implements asynchronous communication is called by the name as universal asynchronous receiver transmitter so whenever i use a word called uart that mean that it supports asynchronous communication now what are the protocols available or implemented in most of the microcontroller for synchronous communication they are i2c and spi and also usb is also available in more in the uh, advanced microcontrollers so for most of the times we use these two protocols so if somebody ask what are the protocols supported for serial communication in a microcontroller three protocols are supported uart i2c and spi so among these three which is asynchronous uart is asynchronous which is synchronous so i2c and spi is synchronous uart is used to establish communication between the uh, pcs or laptops or the printers <coughs> which are little long uh, located at the longer distance i2c and spi are used to interface the different IC, uh, uh, ics sd card 
so such uh, memories such interfaces which are closely in exist in proximity now having understood these are the support provided by lpc2148 today we will discuss and program how uart can be used and write a low level driver programs to send the data to the pc or to receive the data from a pc and use it in the program now let's understand the uart <clears throat> this uart they have provided two uart modules are provided so if you just look look at this here there's a uart 0 and the uart 1 so like the timers we have timer 0 and timer 1 so you may have multiple advantages having multiple uarts one you may be connecting to the pc another you may connecting to the gps module so or gsm module or you can use that to connect to another to uh, another computer that mean that when you have a multiple uarts are there it's always a better because lot of modules are like a gps gsm modules or supports what is called as serial mode so since you may require in a project to control or to connect multiple devices so multiple uarts is recommended so lpc2148 and some other latest versions of uh, in the same series you have up to four also is available for example 1768 <coughs> which is a uh, next version or next advanced version from the nxp semiconductor they provide a four uarts so it's better to have more uarts so 2148 provides two uarts so we call as uart 0 and the uart 1 now let's go to the the standards what is provided by asynchronous serial communication <coughs> now since it's a serial communication the data whatever you are sending will always be through one pin called txd0 i am just discussing now with one uart same thing is applicable for other uart also so uart module provide one pin called as transmit data for uart 0 it's called as 0 for uart 1 it's called as txd1 so this pin sends the data which you are writing parallelly into serial that means that whatever the data you write into this module by the programmer is parallel but that parallel data is converted into serial data and send on this line on this line using what is called as serial method like a 0 1 1 0 it splits all the data parallel data into bits and just push the data on this line so that is the meaning of a txt so the data returned in the uart module will convert into serial format and pushed on this pin one bit at a time there is one more pin is available called receive data so this pin receives the data into the uart module in the serial fashion and then the uart module convert the serial data into the parallel data and gives the data back to the the processor so that we can use that for processing or collecting and storing in the memory so these are the two pins are available for any uart module apart from these two pins there are some other pins around six pins available they called dsr device set ready so device uh, the, there is a d uh, rts request to send there is a cts clear to send dtr device terminal ready dcd so the carrier detects ri ring the indicator these are the six signals which are called as hardware handshaking signals so which were earlier days extensively used when the modem was used to connect the microcontroller to the telephone lines nowadays most of the interfaces we don't use this hand checking signals but 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 by chance if you get legacy systems legacy hardware system which is support to establish communication to the microcontroller so always think that these pins are available to establish communication to the legacy systems like modems to the microcontroller so this is required only in certain cases not all the cases so these are the pins what is available from the uart module now let's go to understand what is present in the uart module that is the different sub blocks present inside the module now so these are the blocks what is present inside the uart module so let's understand one by one so the first block is called as a transmitter block 
what is a transmitter block will do it transmitter block receives the parallel data into a register called transmitter holding register that mean that transmitter holding register is visible to the programmer so whenever somebody has to write into the uart module and send it to serial mode so which is a register available to a program transmitter holding register so how do we write that register we can access that register in a program so by using that register called as u0th see for example i am in this program i am writing some data parallel data into the uart module how do you write u0th so u0thr is the register available to the programmer so to write the parallel data into the module now as soon as you write the parallel data that is 8 bit data or ascii codes into this module the uart module has a, a hardware which converts parallel data into serial data we know that we have learned in seven segment display also shift registers are extensively used to convert parallel data into serial data but here i am not providing an external shift register it is built in the you are in the lpc2148 you are module already the moment you write 8 bit data it loads into the shift register shift register converts the parallel data into serial data based on the clock provided into this module and pushes the data so this is the principle of transmitting block so transmitter block can be accessed by uh, thr register now let's understand the receiver block the second block present in the uart module so whatever the serial data received into the uart module will be converted into the parallel data using receiver shift register it assembles all the 8 bit of data convert into one 8 bit of data and then puts into the receiver buffer register how do we uh, access this register in the program we can use what is called as rbr see that i can read this register whenever i read this register i am collecting the parallel data corresponding to the serial data which is bombarded into the uart module so now we have understood that so there is a what is called transmitter block is present which has got a shift register to convert parallel to serial data we have a receiver block so which converts serial to parallel block and the programmer can access these two block using a two register called thr register and a receiver buffer register now we will understand now before we start writing to this data into this one or before we receiving this one is it required to program this for a particular mode of communication so now let's understand the fundamental of asynchronous communication so whenever we do asynchronous communication this is the format of an asynchronous serial communication what is the basic principle there are two characteristics for asynchronous serial communication unlike synchronous communication in a synchronous communication like an i2c spi or usb you send bulk data let's say uh, 50 bytes one block and then synchronize for every block here synchronization happens for every byte so that is the difference between asynchronous and asynchronous in a synchronous in a asynchronous you synchronize or you establish an understanding for every byte you send outside the microcontroller through a uart module for example if i want to write let's say character 0 or character a i want to send outside the microcontroller to a computer now how does these data is represented it's represented in ascii code for example 0 30 a some other ascii code is there so what should i do it <clears throat> i should convert that zero into ascii code and then this ascii code will require how many bits eight bits are required now before i send this eight bits outside asynchronous communication requires what is called an understanding that mean that we have to give an indication that when is the data is the beginning that is what is the beginning of the data and also indicate ending of the data <clears throat> so beginning of the data and the ending of the data can be achieved using what is called as the start bit and what is called as a stop bit always the line the txt line if you are not sending any data it will be always in the high line it will be high it will always will be high so as soon as you write these characters into the transmitter holding register immediately what will happen the line falls from high to zero and it will be start bit will be sent first and then the complete bits corresponding to the your ascii code will be sent then the line becomes high indicating the stop bit 
<clears throat> so this is how the format of asynchronous serial communication will be there. So every character is preceded by the one start bit and then the followed by the stop bit. <clears throat> so totally 10 bits will be there. Now, so there are some older systems are there where I'm required to send more amount of time for a stop bit instead of one bit for a stop. Sometimes it's a 1.5 or a two bits also required for the stop bit. Older systems which require time to receive the data and process and ready for the next data bit. So that is why they have provided and there are certain systems are there where you don't require eight bits. So there are certain coding systems. You don't require eight bits here. Only seven bits are sufficient for the data. So that means that most of the microcontrollers will provide a facility or what is called as configuration for the programmer to choose whether your data it should be eight bits per code or seven bits per code or six bits per code. So like that I can configure it and also stop bits I can configure as what? Is it one stop bit, one and a half stop bit or two stop bits or no stop bit like that. So there is certain facilities available so which I have to configure before I start using the UART module. Since for a general, for most of the communication, this is a standard format. That is one start bit, eight data bits for the character codes, and then the one stop bit. Then how do we program that? So there is a register is available. There is a register is available. So that register is called as so line control register. So this is a register. I should be able to configure before starting either hold block, transmitter block, or a receiver block. So let's understand now how do we configure the line control register. So line control register is used to prepare the proper framing of the data that is start, stop, the number of bits for the data. So let's understand that now. So this is the line control register. So there are eight bits are available here which are used to configure the different parameters for the communication. Now. Let's understand the what's the bits. The first two bits of the line control register specify the character codes that you are transmitting will require five bits for one character or eight bits. So which one I'm choosing? I'm choosing one one because ASCII codes require eight bits for one code. Now, how many stop bits? So I'm going for one stop bit. So I'm choosing this option. So as I said, for slow devices, we may require two stop bits. Now. Similarly, whenever you send the data <coughs> using asynchronous serial communication from a microcontroller to external device, there is a chance that error may creep in while transmission. So to identify at the receiving device like a computer, whether error has occurred while transmission, so concept called parity is used. So if I introduce a parity, I can always check at the computer side whether error has occurred. For example, if I follow uh, what is called as odd parity. I should make sure that at the computer also I received an odd parity number. If I use even parity, I can make sure that at the computer whether the number I received is an even parity. So the parity logic is required to identify the error in the transmission. Most of the time, as we have observed it, it is not required for a long, small distances like three, three meters or four meters. Without the parity, also system will work. What is the <coughs> advantage of parity? Error checking. But you have to require one extra bit. So along with this, whatever the you have, uh, 10 bits, you have to introduce one more bit called as parity bit. So that means that your just extra bit you have to stuff into this bits, 10 bits. So it becomes 11 bits. So that it requires more time to communicate the data. So whenever we are sure that the error chances are very less, or so there is a some other software method to identify the error is there or not, I can avoid this parity bit. So, but facility is there to add the parity bit into this 10 bit format so that it becomes 11 bit. So if you don't require the parity, I can disable the parity logic. So I will disable to start with. So I am not using, so I'll make it zero. So when you make it zero, the parity select question does not come to picture. If you enable the parity, you have to choose whether you are following odd parity or even parity. So this is, we are not using it. So I'm not, I'm just taking the default values. So this let's understand later. So now I'll make this is equal to one to start with. I'll tell you what is the meaning of that. Now, now configuration is over. So what is the purpose of LCR register? The purpose of LCR register is to set 
number of bits for characters how many stop bits are there whether parity is required or not so once you prepare all those things so we know that one one i choose zero 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 and the last i choose the one so that means that i have to write the program in the beginning so this value into this register you can see that i have written so i have written that data into this register now so after writing this the value that is whatever i get that is a 83 83 is the value i get so i can write into the line control register now so now let's understand the next block what is required to understand now I have configured the framing that is framing of the data that is how my data format looks the start stop and the number of bits now one of the property of asynchronous serial communication is compared to the uh, the synchronous communication the difference is each time you push the data outside the microcontroller the device which you are connected to the microcontroller let's say the computer should able to know that what is the speed at which the data is coming otherwise it will receive the data as a garbage data see i am pushing the data here now pc is there here now what is the speed i at which you push the data there should be an understanding between the microcontroller and the pc if that understanding does not exist then whatever the data you receive here it may not be proper it will be garbage data in synchronous communication generally along with the data we also send the clock so that the pc can with the help of a clock can able to recollect recollect or it can uh, extract the data from the serial communication based on the clock signal but in asynchronous communication unlike in asynchronous communication we are not sending the clock that is why in the uart module there is only two pins are provided one is a txd other is an rxd there is no clock pin is available so whenever there is no clock you are sending along with the data there should be an understanding between the both the systems what is an understanding the speed at which you are sending the data we generally call it as a baud rate the speed at which you are sending the data number of bits per second that is called baud rate <coughs> should be predefined at the microcontroller side and also at the pc side if i am sending the data at 9600 baud rate i should write the program here or use the some other software there select the baud rate as 9600 if both or have an understanding of the same baud rate then whatever the data you send here you are able to collect it properly so this is one of the pre requirement for asynchronous serial communication and like asynchronous serial communication so now it is the responsibility of a programmer then to push the data at a particular speed that is number of bits per second how do i configure the baud rate one of the important calculation for any microcontroller is, is look at the formula for baud rate calculation the formula is different for different microcontrollers now let's understand the formula for lpc2148 baud rate calculation now the basic clock available for the microcontroller for any other clock is always we know that peak clock because peak clock is the reference for what the timer also peak clock was a reference for pwm also so peak clock is a reference for any timing thing now i have to generate what i have to push the data now at a particular baud rate so i am generating a clock signal only here that is a waveform i am generating it so whenever waveform is generated speed is involved so what is the speed what is the basis for that the peak clock since peak clock is very high frequency 15 megahertz by default you cannot push the data at that speed for a slower serial devices for example serial devices like a printers or gps module gs module it cannot work at 15 megahertz speed <clears throat> even though computers can are capable but not all the serial devices that is why peak clock should be further divided to arrive at at a arrive at optimal baud rates like 9600 so maximum 115200 that is been provided to most of the computers so i should divide that for that they have provided what is called as so a divider register that mean that it is called as a uh, divisor latches available that mean that it is a 16 bit register by loading a proper value into this register i am dividing peak clock by this value so that you can able to get 
the the baud rate or transmitter clock which is very low compared to the peak clock now <clears throat> this 16 bit register is formed by combination 2 8 bit register to provide compatibility with the older uart systems they followed the same system in lpc 2148 also so this 16 bit register comprises of two independent registers so which are addressed differently you cannot address them in a single instruction both are different so one is called divisor latch register lsb other is called a divisor latch msb register called a dlm and dll so these register i have to write certain value so what is the value i supposed to write it so the formula for that now what are the things the transmitter clock i have to generate that is a baud rate the input is peak clock how much i have to divide has to be loaded here so the formula for that is so let's understand the formula for that now so this is the formula for the for that so baud rate required baud rate you have to write this side left side what is the required you find out peak clock we know that 15 megahertz so the 16 into dlm colon dll so both dlm and dll forms a 16 bit value but you have to write separately into this 8 bit and to this 8 bit but together it is 16 bit number so you have to find out this one for the required the baud rate for example so if i require the baud rate of 9600 uh, and the peak clock is this one so i can find out what is the dlm dll let's take an example now so now i am calculating the the dlm dll value for the baud rate of 11000 uh, 1 lakh 15200 so it's 1 lakh 15200 this is the maximum baud rate which you can set in most of the softwares so in the computer side for example if you take arduino also if you look at the uart the speed at which you can communicate with arduino board it's 1 lakh 15200 so there's a lot of uh, 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 serial terminals are available at putty and other softwares so in that you can establish a communication between the microcontroller by setting the proper baud rate so this is generally maximum provided in most of the softwares available in the pc side so now let's calculate what is the value I am supposed to load in the DLM DLL module to achieve this board rate. So the formula I have taken it, I have substituted. So this is a this is a formula. I have got the formula. So I just board rate. I have uh, substituted here board rate. I change the in this formula. So this is the the formula. So that P clock divided by 16 to board rate. So I have substituted the values here. So what is the value I got? Eight. Since this eight value has to be loaded into the 16 bit registers we know that when the value of this is less than 256 that is 0 to 255 then only it requires what 8 bit that means that always the dll will have the to be loaded and you have to make the dlm is equal to 0 when when the value is what less than 256 because maximum up to 0 to 255 you take only 8 bits is required that is why we require only 8 bit register whenever this value is more than 255 that is above or equal to 256 then i should extract the lower 8 bits put into the dll register then the next upper 8 bits i'll extract and put into the dlm register that we know that so whenever you take this value decimal value <coughs> go to the calculator convert into hexadecimal you get a four digit number the lower two digit number put into here the upper two digit number you can put into this one that's the one method we can follow it so now otherwise another another method is what so you can extract the lower 8 bits using what is called as uh, modulus of 256 upper 8 bits you can extract using division symbol that is a uh, upper 8 bits so you can use this method also to extract and put into this register so now now i have understood how do i configure the baud rate for the uart module now so having understood the all the basic blocks which is uh, required for the uart module now let's go to the programming of the uart modules so summarizing the transmitter block will be accessible by using a transmitter holding register. I can write the parallel data here, convert it to serial data. The receiver block, I can access it using a receiver buffer register, which gives me the serial to parallel data, converted data. And the, the baud rate, required baud rate, I can program it using the, the baud rate generator. So I can configure the framing of the asynchronous serial data format using what is called the line control registered now so now i will write one small module called as uart 
init module. So which I'll be using in any of the programs, wherever a user, UART module. This is called a UART init program. So <clears throat> what are the things I'm doing it? First of all, identify you require two pins, TXT and RXT pins. I'm just now considered for UART 0. UART 0 uses P0.0 as a TXT line. The P0.1 is used as a RXT line. We know that whenever you are using port lines other than the port purpose, that is for alternate functions, you have to write into the pin selection zero register. So this I have got it, five I got it, to configure P0.0 and P0.1 as TXD0, RXT0, because they are alternate function one. So that is why, so when I say five, it is zero one and it is a zero one I got it. Since it's a P0.0, that is a, the first two bits of the pin selection register I am configuring for alternate function one. The P0.1 is nothing but the next two bits in the pin selection zero register. I am configuring that as, so first alternate function. So that is why I've written here. So you can use other methods also to write into the pin selection zero register as we studied in the port programming. Now, after configuring the pins for your operation, as I said, you have to write 83 into the LCR register to set for a no parity, eight bits data and one stop bit. So there is a one concept is there. So for an LCR register, the last bit of an LCR register is called as a DLAB bit, DLAB bit. So what is a DLAB bit and why do we require the DLAB bit? So this is the divisor latch access bit, DLAB bit. So generally, to support older systems, to support the older system, it, it was not it was not required only to support legacy UART modules of older microcontroller. They provided this one. They provided only one address, <clears throat> both for uh, there's a, for example. So what is an address for transmitting hold register? The same address is there. What is an address for the receiver buffer register? Both address. When you write it, it is considered as a transmitter holding register. Whenever you read that address, it's considered as a receiver buffer register. And also, the same address was also used to access this block also. So, divisor, sorry, baud rate generator block also to access the divisor latch in this one. So, which bit controls whether I'm accessing the transmitter block or I'm accessing the baud rate generator block? That is controlled by the DLAB bit. So, that's why whatever we do it. So, whenever I, I'm configuring, the are accessing divisor latch the block that is a DLL or DLM. First, I will write zero into this bit, finish the baud rate calculation or the programming. Then I rewrite one into this bit. That's what we do it in the program. This is to retain the compatibility of the older systems because there was a limitation in the older microcontrollers. So now what I have done here, so the last bit of the LCR register, DLAB bit, I'm making it one. So then I finish programming of the baud rate. Then after finishing this one, I'll rewrite back the last bit into zero. So that is why you get a zero three. Only the last bit is changed here. Last bit is one year, last bit is one. So this is a method we have to follow that one. Now I finish. So this is what is called as UART initialization. Once you initialize this UART, you can use this UART in any of the programmings. You can use with the timers, you can use the PWM, you can use the ports. So you can use it. So along with the other modules. Now, having finished, having finished how to initialize the UART, let's now send data from the UART block outside. Now, let's understand the concept for that now. So let's go to the, now, the first writing of the data. So now I supposed to write the data into, uh, into the UART block. Now my requirement is, I have a string is available, which I have stored in a one buffer. So RVC CAC is a string. I want to send this data to the computer. So through the UART module of the LPC 2148. Now, assume that the connection between the UART module and the computer is already established. How do you establish a connection before we start writing the program? So let's understand that logic and then go to the other block programming. Now, so the protocol on the standard, which is available in the market for the asynchronous communication is popularly called as RS-232 standard. If somebody refers now on today onwards, if somebody says RS-232, immediately what should come to your mind? RS-232 
is a standard name for universal asynchronous receiver transmitter communication so rs232 is a standard for serial asynchronous communication used in the industry so why the standard is required because the microcontroller manufacturers are different the pc manufacturers are different the peripheral manufacturer different so there are three different players are there computer manufacturer different peripheral manufacturer like printers mouse keyboards are different the microcontroller manufacturers are different now unless you establish a standard what do you mean by standard how many pins are required what is the voltage levels you have to use in the in those two pins and uh, what is the logic required is a positive logic negative logic so all this has to be defined by the industry so if this is standard is there everyone will manufacture as per the standard let's say if the standard is not there what will happen if somebody sends the data on the thd line in form in terms of what 0 to 3.3 some microcontrollers send the data in 0 to 5 volts some microcontrollers send the data from 0 to 2.8 volts so there is no standard is there how does the device manufacturers know that in what voltage data data in what voltage levels it comes so to make it standard so rs232 standard is proposed by the industry the veterans all the companies were part of the standard they said that this standard so should be imposed for all asynchronous serial communication among the different devices what is the standard there are three parameters for this standard now to since i said there is a 3 to around 100 meters cable can be exist between the microcontrollers and the devices and the pc there is a chances of noise interference can exist in the communication to avoid the noise let us implement a voltage levels which is which is not susceptible to the noise interferences so that is why they have changed they have chosen voltage levels called minus 12 volts to plus 12 volts is a voltage levels they have used to send the data from to here that mean that so they are, i am not sending the data on these lines using 0 to 5 volts i am using what voltage is minus 12 to plus 12 volts whenever you use this voltages the gap between minus 12 to plus 24 plus 12 is what 24 voltage that mean that whenever the gap between the plus 1 logic and the zero logic is more the chances of the noise interfering the data is very less because noise has to be very high voltage should be there so that much of chances of interference will be very less if i don't use this one if the gap between 0 to 5 volts and 0 to 3.3 voltage is only 3.3 volts noise can interfere so that is why they given a large range for the logic 0 and the logic 1 this is the first one so the second one is they have followed what is called as a negative logic so to have certain compatibility and so to, so to, to have certain advantages so what is this negative logic says that so negative logic means whenever i want to send zero i am not sending the plus voltage i am sending the minus 12 voltage so whenever i want to send zero i will be sending what minus 12 volts whenever i want to send sorry the other way whenever i want to send uh, zero i am going for a logic 1 so whenever i am going to send zero i am using a plus 12 volts that mean that normal positive logic zero means what lower voltage so one means higher voltage so here we are doing what so the opposite of that so zero means so the higher voltage one means the lower voltage so this is second method we have followed negative logic then so to implement this communication so you require so the i think this comes two lines are there they said two lines is required what is called as a as already we have discussed txd and rxt now now to establish this communication between these two systems now you have to follow this logic this rs232 standard but do have the do have this standard is implemented in the lpc 214 or any other microcontroller no including the arduino or we might not have used an arduino board or even a raspberry pi board they have implemented uart logic and they provide what is called ttl logic so what is a ttl logic ttl means one means 5 volts or 3.3 uh, voltage zero means zero voltage that mean that all the microcontrollers including rpi uh, controllers used in arduino they provide the uart module outputs in the ttl logic but industry requires rs232 interface that is why whenever you want to connect to the computer 
or whenever you want to connect to the other serial devices which follow UART standard, you have to convert or translate the TTL logic into RS232 logic. The, for that, we use what is called translators or TTL2 RS232 translators. One of the popular IC which is used extensively in the industry is called MAX232. So MAX232 is an IC which converts the TTL logic into RS232 logic. What is RS232 logic? This standard. Negative logic, voltage range is different, everything. So once you use a MAX232, then you can establish a communication. As per the RS232 standard, generally the connectors provided at the PC side or the device side is 9 pin connector or 25 pin D type connector. So look at the shape of the connector D type. In older computers, if you look at it even today, you have this connector called 9 pin or 25 pin D type male connectors are available in the computers. Whenever you look at this 9 pin or 25 pin D type male connector in any of the computers, just think that it's a serial port. It's a serial port. It supports your communication. So if most of the nowadays systems, which is available, laptops, something, they don't have a serial port. So now what you have to do when you want to connect to the uh, microcontroller modules, you have to purchase what is called as, so USB to serial port converters. It's available. We call it a bridge. USB to serial port bridges. The moment you purchase that bridge, then what will happen? This type of connector will be available uh, from that, the converter. Then you can connect with a cable to the LPC2148. And the LPC2148 also, you have to uh, purchase uh, an adapter which converts TTL to RS232. So many times when you do a project, this type of connectors are available. Just think that this is for RS232 interface. Some of the times, if you don't require RS232 interface, for example, think about the connection between the compute and the Arduino board. So there is no uh, adapters we have used. We have directly used what? TTL of the computer directly towards the TTL connection of the Arduino microcontroller. In such cases, we are not following RS232 standard. We are just connecting the PC, converting USB to UART TTL and then connecting to the Arduino board directly here. So sometimes we may not use an RS232 standard. In such cases, what you're doing, you're just connecting the TTL lines of the UART module like TXT and RXT directly to the TXT, RXT of the converters which you have plugged into the, the PC. So the many times the Arduino board has got that converter implemented inside the Arduino board. That is why you directly connect through the cable to the Arduino board to the computer. Because why? The, that the conversion of USB to uh, TTL UART is already done in the Arduino board. So just keep in mind these are the connections generally require whenever you connect microcontroller to the number of legacy devices. So this is very important whenever you want to build the projects. Now, now let's go to the programming and understand how do we do it. I will just show that using a keel model directly now. Now we have understood the connection between the LPC2148 and to the PC to implement the RS232 standard. So now we'll go to the programming. So I have written a small program to convert. So a string, push the string data into the computer, into the computer. So look at this program. So I declared a string RBC CAC and just stored in a buffer the message. Then I have written a program. So first I called UART init. So this is, I've just done it to set the uh, PLL logic of the LPC2148 to make C clock is equal to 16 megahertz, P clock is equal to 15 megahertz. Otherwise, you can avoid this also. So you are in it, I've done it. Then, so this is the logic I've used it. I will take one by one character from the, the message until the last character in the string. And then I will write into the THR register the character. We, we know that. Whenever I write into the THR register of the UART model, it will convert into serial and send it. Before I do this one, one handshaking is required at the software level. So this is called as a low level driver programming. These are the types you have to implement in the low level driver programming. 
to have an understanding between the slow devices and the fast device. Why this understanding is required? See, for example, I'll take the first character W, or sorry, R, and I'll write into this one. Now, R is reached to the computer, you collected this one. Or R is reached to some Wi-Fi module and it is converted into Wi-Fi signal. Now, can I write immediately V into this module? See, there is a there is a difference between the speeds. The time you take to program this one or to run the instruction is what? At the C clock, 60 megahertz. The time the UART module takes to push this data, the parallel data into serial data is less because 9600 is a baud rate. So 9600 is the speed at which the THR module data is converted into serial and pushed it. But the time it takes to run this program, it's at 60 megahertz. So there's a lot of gap is there. If you write continuously into this module one after the other character without hand checking, what will happen? You have not sent the, still the characters are not received at the PC, but you are overwriting the new characters. Even though you send RBC CAC, you get at the PC only E, the last character. Because why? You have overwritten before it is transferred to the PC. So to have that gap or understanding between the two systems which are running at different speeds, you require a understanding. So U0 LSR is a register provided, it's called a status register inside the UART module. This register contains one bit. That is which bit is called fifth bit. <clears throat> the fifth bit indicates for us whether the previously sent character has been already pushed, has been transmitted successfully out of the UART module. If it is successfully transmitted, then only I can write the next character. So what is the bit number, fifth bit number in this module? So if the BIF bit is zero if the sorry the fifth bit is zero that means that still the transmission is going on the previous character still is going on bit by bit whenever the fifth bit in this register becomes one that means that it's successfully transmitted i can transmit the next character so that is why i'm checking i'm checking for the fifth bit and and if it is zero zero that means still the transmission is going on i'll be waiting in a loop once the transmission is completed i will write the character now so instead of this you can also give a delay that is what we had did in the some previous programs wherever you use a u dot module you can just set a delay of one millisecond but that is not efficient so this is the most perfect one because you are not wasting the time <clears throat> so this is the program so this is the program for transmitting this one so i've initialized then i written this while loop to take character by character i use a handshaking to wait for the previous character to be transmitted i finish so this is a program to transmit data from the UART module into the any external devices using serial communication. Let's come to the, the receiving side now. Now I want to receive the data from RXT line. How do we receive it? I said RBR is a register, through that I can receive it. But when you can receive it, again there is an understanding you should be there. That means that the data which is coming on the RXT line is very slow, bit by bit, on the baud rate 9600 like that. But whereas this program can execute very fast at 60,000, 60 megahertz speed. So you cannot just read RBR like that. You have to wait till all the bits of one code has reached RBR. Then only you should be able to read it. How do I know that where the whole character has been assembled in the RBR register for that again, the line status register is provided in the UART module. One bit in that is used to check this status. That is which bit? Bit zero. That is why I'm just adding the, the first bit. So nothing but the first bit I'm checking. If the first bit is zero, that means still the character has not arrived fully. Whenever the first bit, D0 bit of the LSR register is one, that means that character has arrived at the receiver buffer. So then I can read it. So this is what I've done it. So I'm just waiting till the character is arrive, uh, to be available at the RBR register. Once it's available, what I'm doing is I'm just reading it. So here I've just done some programming logic. What is that I've written? Whatever the data I received here, I'm just writing that into the P0.16 to the P0.24. Uh, that is 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So that is eight bits, the P0.16 to 23. I'm writing the whatever the data I've written so that I can observe in the simulator. That is what I've done it. I'm just clear that eight bits, I'm writing the data into this one. <clears throat> Since I'm writing at the... Uh, 16 to 17, I'm still shifting the data, I'm loading it. So this is actually reading it. So you don't require this whole statement. You can take this data and directly put into memory buffer also. Only for showing you the data on the pins to show to, to demonstrate, I've just written the statement. Now, 
uh, how many times you read it, it depends upon you. If you have an understanding that the computer sends the last byte as some zero or some X, then you can you can keep checking. Whenever the X reaches, you can come out of the while loop. Or if you know that computer sends 50 bytes, you can be in the loop for 50 times and then come out. So here to demonstrate, I just written indefinite loop so that it will be waiting till uh, uh, waiting indefinitely for all the characters, whatever you're sending from the computer side. So now let's run this program and understand how the data can be transmitted and data can be received. So I'll just execute this statement. So I've just opened GPO module because whatever the data I receive, I'm pushing in the 16 to 23. So this is the block is available here. <coughs> and this is the uh, UART module. You can see that line control U0 LCR. So this is where you can configure the number of bits, number of stop bits, the parity and everything. This is a U0 LSR register. Here the bit zero I'm using the for whether the receiver data is ready or not. That is the first bit receiver data ready, RDR it's called as. And the fifth bit is called as uh, transmitter holding register MT. That means that previously sent character has been transmitted or not. So you can just check this one. I think it's closed. I'll just open again. So one or five minutes, we will just see that how the program and the serial port, a serial terminal can be used to receive the data and to push the data also. So this is like a keyboard in the simulator. So if you know this concept, you can use uh, this window to push the data into the serial window. So let's learn that concept. So I will share the window. So, so the window is available. So now what I'll do is I'll finish the first portion. I've opened the UART one window from the view. And from the view, there is a what is called as so serial windows are there. So the first UART I opened it here, and this is the uh, UART the module details. So where whatever the registers we are using it LCR, LSR register. So the baud rate calculation, all those things you can able to see here. So now I'll finish the, the first few instruction. So I have UART in it, I finished. So you can see that approximately 9,600 is a baud rate usage. It's an approximation because the calculation division and everything, it's an approximately, but it works because this, uh, this much of difference will not make any difference in the communication. Uh, I have done it. So then the eight bits, stop bits, or the no parity, all this has been configured here. Now I will execute the first logic. So the, my first logic is I am pushing the data uh, into the UART. So you can see that one by one character will comes here. So see that I am pushing the data RVC. You can see that on the UART window, <coughs> you can see RVC CSE is being transmitted. Then now I successfully transmitted the uh, the string. The first logic is work. Now I will execute the second logic. So second logic will run continuously. It will be waiting for what? The data from the RxD line. So I'll run continuously now. Now it is running continuously now. So it is. I have to feed the data at RxD line. How do you feed the data at RxD line? You can use the same window. Whatever I type in this window will be converted into serial fashion and will be pushed into the receiver buffer. So whatever you receive in the UART module, you can always type it here whatever you send out of the UART module will be available in this window. So now I will type zero. So zero is what ASCII code for zero is 30. That means that you can observe here. You can observe here as soon as I type zero here that will be received on this buffer. You can see that this is a place I can receive. Now I will type here. Now I will take the cursor type zero. 
see that the moment I type 0, you got what? 30 here. So you can see that this data is also can be, we can uh, shift and put the data here also. So I'm executing this program. So I'll type the data. So as soon as I type the data, so you can see that the value is changing here. See that 31, now 1. So 2, I've typed it. So 32. So 3, I've typed it. 33. So 4, I'm actually, I'm typing it, actually. So 4, I'm typing it here. You can see that 34, you're reading here. So, so if I type 5 here, see that. So 35, you got it. So same 35, you got it. If I type A, capital A, so you got 61 ASCII code. You got the 61. Like that, you can use this window to in the simulator to receive the data into the uh, microcontroller, uh, the program, and you can use it as a keyboard also. So this completes the UART module, the working and the programming. So now we'll stop sharing. Stop the recording. So if any doubt is there, you can just raise your doubt.